Hey there, folks. It's Tito here. Jeff Fidoff with the Buckeye Blitz. Follow me on the X at that happens. Stay Free Sports, uh, powered by DSP Media. And uh, go to the download the app. It's a free app for Apple and Android both. Go check it out. Round the clock program. So many great different shows we have here on this network. Um, also, fanstreamsports.com. And also, uh, go to the Facebook page for the Fan Stream Sports page. And um, you can interact with hosts, other um, fans of the different shows, but it's a great spot to go to. So go check that out. So here we are now on the um, the eve of – I recorded this on Friday, uh, late Friday afternoon about the Rutgers-Ohio State game coming up at noon on Saturday um, in uh, Piscataway, New Jersey, where Rutgers plays. Um, Rutgers bowl eligible under Greg Schiano this year. They've already got their six wins. And – um, Ohio State, of course, enters coming off the CFP rankings with a number one overall in the rankings, followed by Georgia at two. Um, and we know that uh, Michigan is there at three, Florida State at four. So um, big game for Ohio State. It, and look, Rutgers is not so – Ohio State, when they played Rutgers now, they've played them nine times, and the average margin of victory for Ohio State is 42 points. I don't expect that kind of a blowout. Ohio State is still better than Rutgers. I think they're an 18-point favorite in this game. And – um, deserved, and I think that Ohio State will cover that spread, but Rutgers is not the pushover team that Rutgers has been before. Uh, they've got a really solid defense. They're uh, um, one of the better defenses, I think, in the, in the United States and in the country, I should say, and then uh, they run the ball very well. They don't pass it very often or very well, but they do run the ball very well. That's kind of their bread and butter. Um, they, along with Ohio State, the Buckeyes and Rutgers, I think the only two teams left in D1 that have not allowed a uh, a play of over 40 yards yet. So we could see that possibly change with Ohio State's explosive offense. Uh, but the Rutgers offense, their whole game plan is going to be, now, Shiano being there, they will try some trick plays. You'll see some, some things here and there that you weren't expecting. But the fact that Ohio State expects it, expect the unexpected, uh, hopefully they can minimize that and maybe still walk out of there without allowing a play of over 40 yards on the season. Rutgers, all they're going to try to do is run the ball. They're going to try to run the ball, and with these new clock rules in place, and we saw it hurt Ohio State when they played Indiana, where um, you know the Buckeyes had fewer possessions because Indiana was able to not only have a couple of longer drives, but also because of the new clock rules, which limited Ohio State's possessions as opposed, opposed to the previous year and other games last year when they played. So that's the game plan Rutgers will try to employ, is run the ball successfully, keep the ball for long stretches of time, and give Ohio State fewer chances on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, that's their whole game plan going into this game, outside of a couple of trick plays. And it's interesting to see how Ohio State's uh, flipping around. Ohio State's offensive line handles Rutgers' defensive line. Rutgers' defensive line is very strong, and um, they're going to try to put pressure on McCord, try to stop this Ohio State run game. Speaking of the run game, we got news that Mayan Williams is out for the season now for Ohio State. Uh, had what they called a knee procedure. He's a redshirt junior, so um, you know he has another year if he wants it. We'll see what happens. With that that's a big blow, though. Mayan Williams being out because of the running game. Uh, you know they they last year we had all these different injuries pile up. Trayvon Henderson looked good last week um, and uh, rushed for 162 yards against Wisconsin. Had his moments there, but now they have to rely on Chip Trainum and uh, and also Dallin Hayden. I think the uh, the red shirt the thought of him redshirting is out the window now. I think you just go ahead and play him. Um, and, and let it go and, and see because they're going to need that running back depth. They've got Rutgers, uh, Michigan State, Minnesota before the game against Michigan. So they're going to have to run the ball well. That's going to be the key for Ohio State in this game is can they establish the run. Kyle McCord, quarterback, also has to limit his turnovers. Um, look, the Wisconsin game, I know McCord wasn't great. I'll, I'll freely admit that. But I think that people are being too critical of Kyle McCord because he is doing what's being asked of him within the offense. And the, the things that piss me off are if he has like a bubble screen or something uh, early in the game, it seems to happen often, and he throws it, it it's short of the, the intended target. Those kinds of things bother me. But I do believe, though, that McCord has been what Ohio State has needed. This is a different team from, than you've seen in Ohio State's last few years. You know, when you had guys like, um, you know, Stroud and Fields and, um, you know, you had Haskins, you had guys like that back there um, that were throwing the ball. And, it, Ohio State would put up huge numbers and would just hope the defense was able to not allow as many points as Ohio State scored. And the defenses were not elite. They weren't great. And this year, it's it's a flip of that switch where the defense now is what's going to carry this team throughout uh, the rest of the season into the CFP. 
they're going to have to count on the defense. So McCord will have he, – look, he'll take a couple of chances up top. he got Marvin Harrison Jr. at Buka's back, which is a huge deal. They've got plenty with Cade Stover. Should get involved. Didn't catch a pass last week against Wisconsin. But, you know, um, I liken the Stover thing uh, – I'm sorry, the McCord thing to a lot like what you saw if you watched Thursday Night Football between Pittsburgh and Tennessee with Kenny Pickett for the Steelers that, you know, he – they asked him to play. They asked Kenny Pickett to play in a certain range in a certain box and hope the defense and count on the defense to be the difference in the game. Same thing Ohio State really does it quite a bit. Now they have a bigger, they have the big play opportunities with Harrison and Buka, obviously Henderson, uh, Chip Transman, Grace. They, they have big the Stover. They have big play opportunities within that offense. But but look, McCord does what's asked of him. And mistakes are killer. We can't have turnovers, can't have mistakes. But if McCord plays within himself within the game plan. This is going to be just fine coming up on Saturday. So uh, Buckeyes, Rutgers Saturday. I think it's going to be like a um, like a 43-10 to 10 kind of game, 43-9. to 9. I, I don't think Rutgers gets into double digits. Um, Ohio State is still not allowing anybody to score many points this season. They're doing a great job of that with that defense. It's been fantastic um, with, uh, uh, with Jim Knowles there and what he's been able to accomplish. So that's the way I see the game playing out. I think it's still a big win for Ohio State uh, as long as uh, Kyle McCord limits mistakes to probably zero, I guess, and they can establish that running game. I think Ohio State will be just fine. All this other stuff coming out of the Big Ten with uh, the cheating scandal in Michigan. And uh, the earlier this week, the Ohio, uh, the uh, Big Ten coaches got together for a weekly meeting they have with Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti. It's a, a, a video call they do every week. And the uh, all coaches were on there. And they go through the normal business they normally do, whatever they talk about. And at that point, Jim Harbaugh excused himself from the rest of the meeting because um, so they could talk about what's going on at Michigan. Uh, you've got the, um, the, the Connor Stallions uh, seen on the sidelines at Central Michigan uh, scouting Michigan State earlier this year. It was a Friday night game. And it looked like um, – so he's dressed in Central Michigan gear on the sidelines. Connor Stallions, the assistant at Michigan – one of the assistant coaches at Michigan. Uh, Lower-level assistant – Assistant, nonetheless, so was scouting Michigan State there. He had on dark sunglasses for a Friday night game, and when you you could see when he looked around, somebody was standing behind. Um, a blue light would come on, which indicates there those kind of sunglasses that can record things. Um, and so he was doing that. Uh, the clipboard he had had a blank sheet of paper, and he left. Uh, at one point in time, there was a play where um, Central Michigan I think, was scored, and they uh, they came running over to celebrate on the sideline. And it was right by where he was at. And you could see him kind of turn his head to try to avoid being seen there. Uh, and the head coach, uh, Jim McElvain for Central Michigan, he had no idea who it was that was there. You know, but BS answer for that. And um, it, there's video of uh, uh, Stallions leaving the stadium 10 minutes before the game ends. Like, there's still 10 minutes left in the game. Central Michigan's involved in a 17-7 game. You would think you want all your coaches there for that. And he ended up leaving that. So, uh, uh, Purdue's head coach came out and said that he knows for a fact that Michigan's been at like uh, six of their games. So they have uh, electronic records of tickets being bought by Connor Stallions to attend Purdue games. So all of this is coming out now. And the uh, Tony Petini, the Big Ten commissioner, wanted to hear what the uh, Big Ten coaches had to say. And according to numerous sources, uh, they were pretty pissed off about this. They think they, are, uh, they want Petini to do something, do something harsh, do it quickly. And he has the ability to make a judgment right now on Michigan. He can actually dole out punishment right now to Michigan, and there's no appeal process. It's like the way the Big Ten is set up, uh, he is the judge, he's the jury, he's the executioner. Petiti has all that power. And now the NCAA is going to drag their feet on investigation. Uh, the CFP doesn't have any kind of say in this whatsoever. So it's up to the Big Ten to do something. Uh, the ADs also met with Petiti, I believe, today, uh, being Friday, in Michigan, where Petiti was there for the uh, field hockey semifinals. And so, um, obviously, Petiti's meeting there with uh, the athletic director and the president of Michigan to talk about this more. Here's what I think is going to happen, though. Um, I think if Michigan had two or three losses right now, and they were no way eligible for the uh, – they weren't going to make the CFP, they could still make the, uh, say, the conference championship game, I think Petiti would have ruled right now – they're ineligible, punished hardball, done all these things. I think that if Michigan loses, say, miraculously as a 32-point favorite um, against Purdue, if they would happen to lose this game, Petini might come down with some kind of sanctions right now. The reason he's waiting 
is, and I know that, look, if you've got all the other 13 schools want something done, and I know he works for all 13 schools, you also have to look at the financial responsibility uh, for the conference. Michigan right now and Ohio State are really the two chances they have at the six, at the four-team CFP, which means big money, big notoriety for the conference if one of those two teams happens to win. If both teams make the CFP, that's great. And if one of them wins it all, that's big for the conference. So those are the two chances, the two best chances that Big Ten has, probably the two only chances of getting into the CFP. Um, so if he would do something that would eliminate Michigan from that, and then Ohio State somehow wouldn't get there, it's an awful look for the Big Ten to not have anybody in the CFP. And I, I think that's what Petiti's probably thinking is, you know, if if this were Iowa this happened to, um, or Wisconsin or something like that, I think already something would be done. So he's waiting. Right now the Big Ten has two chances at four spots, two teams available for four spots in the CFP. If this were next year, which is why I think he's going to rule on this after this season. He'll do something. But next year, we go to a 12-team playoff in 2024, in addition to Ohio State and Michigan. At When the season starts, you've got uh, in the 12-team, Penn State's alive, Wisconsin's alive, USC, UCLA, Washington, Oregon. So many more chances to make it into the CFP. And so if you look at it from a financial and from just a, um, a brand standpoint, it makes a lot of sense for Petiti to wait because you don't want to shoot yourself out of the CFP right now. And I think Petiti can drag his feet, no matter what the coaches want to say, what the ADs are saying um, to Petiti. I think they're waiting to see what happens. I think that he wants to make sure that the Big Ten has the best opportunity to put at least one and hopefully two teams in the CFP. So that's why he's waiting on. It's all about money. He's going to meet with people. He's going to investigate. He's going to drag it all out, I think, until it gets to the point where um, until it, we just, until it's determined. I, I don't think that he wants to be the one who eliminates Michigan from the CFP, if that makes sense. A um, lot more to talk about, though. We're gonna we'll talk about the game tomorrow afterwards. Like I said, Ohio State I think wins. I'm looking at like a 43 to 10 kind of game. Um, men's hoops and women's hoops get underway both on Monday. Uh, the women in Las Vegas taking on USC in a game uh, amongst top 25 ranked opponents. The men's basketball team gets underway on Monday against Oakland. Uh, so we'll talk about that coming up. But uh, that's it for the for today's Buckeye Blitz. Follow me on the X at It Happens. Fan Street Sports powered by DSP Media. Download the app. It's free for Apple and Android. Thanks so much for tuning in. And we'll talk after the Buckeyes take care of Rutgers.